Right, so if you are just joining, welcome back to the Influencers Journey Show. I know it's been a while. My name is Suzanne Hart, and of course, it's my girl, Taria Hodge. The topic we are talking about today, why it takes 10,000 hours to earn the right. Earn the right to be seen as the expert, earn the right to be seen as the guide, earn the right to be seen as that coach. E-T-R is what we're talking about. So let's, you know, let's start with what exactly does it mean to earn the right? Um, I want to dig into this for, for a moment because I first heard mm -hmm. this, this, this phrase when I was learning to speak and I was working with my speaker coach and, and he talked about E-T-R. And I was like, ETR, what is that? And he says, it's earn the right. Mm -hmm. I love this concept. And you know, I have stretched it and I have used it in all sorts of different places and spaces in our program. However, earn the right is earning the trust, getting the audience to like you and having them feel like they know you in speaking. Yeah. Well, it's the exact same thing in your business. How do you get people to know you and know what you do, but more important, why you do what you do? How do you begin to build their trust? And how do you actually attract them? So they say, that's my person. I'm supposed to work with that person. How do you do that? So that's really what it means. What's it mean for you? You know, it, it's so interesting because I don't think I've ever heard of the term earned the right until, you know, I started to work with you. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, that's very interesting. And one of the things that stood out for me, like immediately was one of the, the challenges that coaches and entrepreneurs have in the markets in the marketplace. And so it's that thing of are you gonna just be the person out there that regurgitates information that was one of the things that i got from that when i understand the concept or are you gonna you know really take people through are you first gonna go through and learn go through the hard knocks like they say the bumps the bruises the challenges and so now when you bring across you know your program you bring across information you are speaking from a place of experience so you're able to tell your audience what what i like to say is you know i i, I see you i get you i got it because why i've been there too and i think that that's the thing that you know, stood out for me because a lot of times, you know, I I've heard about coach hurt and, you know, I have to say probably I've heard some people as well, you know, so <laughs> I've heard of coach hurt out there and I know it's a serious thing. So when we show up, how do we show up, you know, from that place that lets our audience know, our divine clients know that we've been where you are and we're the ones that are now able to take you on the journey. Mm. You know, for one of the things when I really started understanding the concept of earn the right, uh, to ETR is a, is a sweet spot to me. Mm -hmm. And it's a spot that tells an audience, a person, something very unique. And I, and, and I wanna start by saying that when you've walked through a journey and you have had an experience, those 10,000 hours of pain, hurt, grit, I don't know, fall down, get back up, knock down, get back up, feeling lost, you know, you're lost in the desert and it feels like you've done it for 10 years, you know, you're just walking in, all those faint things. There's something about that that changes you. Mm -hmm. There's something about that that I believe you wear yeah. In, on your in your energy there's something about that that when you speak to people they can feel the the pain of it they can feel the the agony at times of it they can feel the knowing of it there's just a difference in the way you communicate when you have been on that journey and i think we underestimate the power of our energy 
the power of our walk, the power of our posture, the power of all those things that's different when you have book knowledge mm -hmm. versus, you know, street <laughs> knowledge, been in the jungle knowledge, I've been chopping through the bush knowledge, I dug that hole myself knowledge. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like different. I got dirty, honey. <laughs> I like that. I like to term it as, you know, you walk, you, you show up like, you know, that, you know, that, you know, you know, that's how I term it. You know, that, you know, that, you know, and then that's how you show up. And it's almost like you challenge or you dare anyone, you know, to tell you different from what you know, because this is your experience. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I think the, 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 the big question that's on the table mm -hmm. is what does it take to earn the right? And again, wanting to say that for me, a big part of it is earning the right is very different between theory and mm -hmm. practice. So uh, I know for myself, when I started this journey and, and there are a lot of programs as coaches and consultants and and experts that people can attach to. So I know we have some John C. Maxwell coaches. We have people who do Robin Sharma's process. And there's a bunch of processes out there. And what was interesting for me, I studied I studied a lot of them. Like I, I, I'm a big John C. Maxwell fan. fan. You know me, me and Robin Sharma. I love Mr. Sharma. Just saying, I'm putting it out there. Just love his work. <laughs> Andy Andrews, love his work. I mean, the list goes on and I read voraciously. However, when it came to putting together my programs, I wanted to dig into my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a reason for that in terms of ETR, ETR, because one of the challenges I saw often is when other people moved with other people's, other people's frameworks, mm -hmm. framework, but they knew the framework. Mm -hmm. Right. And for me, it's that next level that we're talking about when we talk about earning the right. It yeah. is it is I dug into this. I ripped it apart. I lived it. And so one of the things I, I say to most people is I understand this work because it worked on me. I understand this work because I was my first client. I understand this work because it answered the questions that I had for myself. And after it worked on me, then I attempted it on other people right. and it worked on them. And then I thought, Hmm, I have a process and I'm not, and I'm not saying that to, to, negate anyone else's process in terms of if you're a John C. Maxwell coach. I'm saying that it's the digging in and saying, did this work on me? Have I used it so I own it? Right. And I can say, you know, I'm a John C. Maxwell coach because I dug into his stuff and it worked on me. I've gone through his processes and I, it worked. I get it. I can pull it apart. There's a difference in that level if I'm making sense. Yeah, and, and, and I love what you're saying because like like I said, it, it was one of my biggest aha moments when I stepped out, you know, to build build my brand. And so I had systems, I had frameworks. I like I was on a team that, you know, created some of the systems and the framework. And I was responsible for the execution of those things, you know, so building the email list, building, you know, out the webinar, you know, building out the lead generation campaign, but really never had to do it while I was on the team for myself. And it wasn't until when, like I said, I decided to step out and, and, build my brand, there was a totally different level of awareness. And one of the things that came to me is it's like, oh, this is where people are getting stuck. They're getting stuck right here. So it's not the systems because that's what I used to think it was. I used to be like, oh, you know what? You know, the, the things that that's 
hanging a lot of people up is their technology challenge. What I realize is that after you repeat keystrokes, you know, three to five times, muscle memory is going to kick in. You're going to remember the pattern to do stuff. But there was different areas that required a different level of breakthrough awareness yeah a, a different like you like you said a, a change in belief system you know for us as entrepreneurs to push through and mm -hmm. so as i started to work through those things for myself i was just like oh this is this is why people don't don't show up you know <laughs> on camera <laughs> <laughs> and because it's a lot of stuff up up here and as i walk through those stuff for myself then what i realized that i too started to create my own process around that that i was able to share with my clients go you ahead know, you're about to say something it, 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 you're right on the money so so what's really cool cool about that is that i know for myself so I run a mastermind and the mastermind, everyone's in their career or they have a business, they're doing the do. And <laughs> however, they're on the, they're on the journey of meeting the next best level of themselves. So they're in, they're in their 10,000 hours, let, yeah. let's say. And what, and, and, and what's really interesting is everybody's really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. What they're not good at is navigating themselves. And, and so part of what we're talking about in Earn the Ride is no matter what we do, we have to navigate us, our fears, our anxieties, our frustrations, our biases, our preconditioned no notions, our past experiences, the, the boss that hurt us 10 years ago that we're still carrying around, the fear of something that you had as an experience that's standing smack dab between you and where you want to go, the D need to grow into something, but that something you have a conflict with because your conditioning says that's a bad place to be, but you know in order to have your success, you got to get there. When we're talking about earn the right, it's not often a skill. It's a, I got to get past me. Yeah. <laughs> right? I got to get past pride. I got to get past ego. I got to get past yeah. what I don't know. I got to get past asking for help. I got to get past all these things. And it's the stuff that no one talks about. So we go in and we think, oh, well, if I teach them the skills, I teach them the information I give them the stuff. That's not where people are stuck. The people are stuck in, I, 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 I just stuck. I don't know why. Yeah. I have a lot of feelings going on. I'm stuck in fear. So if you've been stuck in fear or you've been stuck in pride or you've been stuck in I don't want to ask for help, if you've been stuck in any of those places, just put stuck in the comment section and let, let us know because this is where the ETR is. Yeah. So um, I see we got Chrissy and she says, I'm Chrissy Anderson and I show people how to be their own boss and earn money from home. Thank you, okay, Chrissy. Great morning. So I know working from home, you've been through some stuff. So please put, let us know one of the, some things that you had to go get through as you earned the right. Yeah, I love it. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's so interesting because in doing my work with you alongside you, I could clearly see some of the areas before, like in the past that I was reluctant to address. So one of the things that just popped into my mind as we're having this conversation, I remember, and I'm using, I'm using my old team as an example. I remember when I did have the opportunity to train and I love doing trainings. And one of the things I would always say is, let's just stick to the training. Let's just stick to the training. And so I wouldn't get into, you know, any of like the background preparation or any of what I or what I like to term as the emotional stuff behind mm -hmm. them. So let's just stick to the training, stick to the training. And like I said, wow, when I stepped out of here, one of the things that my first lesson was a lesson in vulnerability. And I realized like, oh, wow, Teria, you're not really, you know, vulnerable and open. And to see that that was the thing that was the barrier between mm -hmm. myself and my clients and the, the reason why my business wasn't growing the way that I wanted it to grow. And that was like the 
biggest aha for me because I'm just like, what is it? I, you know, I have the skills, you know, I, I, I could teach, I could train, I could break down information really simple so people could get it. I have the patience. Like, what is it? And I thought that showcasing the how or talking about the how of what I do was it. And it wasn't really it. What people really wanted to know was like, how do you really get past, like you said, all of the background stuff, that thing that shows up, you mm -hmm. know, that, that fear that, you know, you're about to turn on the camera and you don't want to do it. And so the minute anything comes up, Oh, you know, let, let me go do that instead. And then you avoid. So it's those things and being able to work through those things for myself. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what my audience is struggling with. And so the more I started to share my experiences and my stories around those things, I started to attract a different level of clientele to me. You know, it's, it's interesting because what we're really talking about is belief mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and this belief is such an interesting thing because there's belief in so many areas. So, right. so there's belief in, in the product that you're bringing to market. And I, I tell people, if I don't believe in my product or any product, I can't sell it. And if particularly if it's my own, I can't, it, no sales is going to happen because people can feel my lack of belief, my lack of confidence. There's belief in, in myself, in my skills, my ability, all those things. And oftentimes, you know, we're talking about being seen as the expert. Oftentimes people equate belief to how much money they've made. They equate belief to how many clients they have and not really understanding that in order to make the money and to attract the clients, the belief has to be there. And so it's that slippery chicken or the egg sort of situation. <laughs> belief in the profession you're in uh, the space that you that you sit in, belief in your systems, belief in your capacity to handle more and more clients, belief in your ability to, to step into the unknown and navigate things that come up. There's all these areas of belief. So when we're talking about those 10,000 hours, it's building that faith muscle, mm -hmm. right? It's building that faith muscle. It's building that belief. So, so one of the things I, I always remember is faith. They say we take a leap of faith because faith is blind. I'm going to go into the unknown and I'm going to have faith that I'm going to answer these questions. I'm going to get the answers. Belief, however, is built. And belief is built through going through those places and spaces where you have to walk with faith until you figure it out. Then you put the belief in your backpack and now you're ready to go and go again. So it's that when we're talking those hours, what we're doing is we're arming ourselves with belief in all these different areas that build us up. So when we say, I am the expert, we actually believe it. And you sit with a level of certainty. And it's that certainty that allows you to sell a product and market yourself. And so it takes time to get there. And for me, I realized was my, my belief determined my price point. So how many of you, when your belief is, is, is small, you can sell the $10 product, Yeah. right? And then your belief gets bigger than you can sell yep. the $50 product. And then your belief gets bigger and you can sell the $1,000 product. And I know I, saw, I see Ms. Decker out there. I see you, Yetta, our <laughs> favorite our favorite Facebook member. I see you. So we're talking, we're talking big numbers with Yetta. So homes and luxury homes and all that wonderful stuff. When we're seeing that, she has built into that belief yeah. that I can move this place. She didn't start there, but that's where yeah. she is right now. It's a muscle. So we're talking about those sorts of things. We're talking about asking for the money. The belief has to be there. That's when it is. That's the earn the right. That's the ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. And, and I and I love that we're having this conversation from this aspect of mindset because once again, um, this is these are the things. So when people, well, I shouldn't talk about people. I talk about myself. I do it all the time. So when I like I said the the concept of you know, 10,000 hours, 
to become an expert, you know, wasn't a new concept for me is one of the things that I heard, you know, on the journey very early in my entrepreneurial journey. But one of the things that I didn't consciously do is link it to the belief. So, you know, is that thing you, you stay in the physical of it. Like, I know if I do this, I do this and I repeat this and I repeat this and I repeat this, like, it, it's going to happen. Like the muscle memory, like I always say, the muscle memory is going to kick in, but it's to now having that conscious knowledge around it in belief and also bringing, and I love how you talk about faith, you know, and how faith is always being in action and tying those things together. So yeah. another level of awareness to it. So as we go through, you know, the 10,000 hours and we're becoming experts in all these different areas, we're now able to recognize that, hey, you know, this is where I'm getting tripped up at. This is the thing that's standing in front of me. But you know what? I have to keep going. And as I keep going, I'm continuing to build my belief as I overcome these hurdles. And then, like you said, one day you just look up and it's just like, oh, my gosh, I did it. I'm doing it. And now I'm able to go ahead and share. But Absolutely. Suzanne, I want to um, also turn around and ask you about one of the things that another concept that you introduced me to it, and the concept is you must first become your first client. So why are we our first client or why must we become our first client? Is it, you know, it, it is because the, whatever process you're, you're, you're selling, whatever process you're marketing, one is first you need to know it works. Mm -hmm. And how many people have an idea and they build a program or they build this thing. However, they haven't lived it. Mm -hmm. and this is, this is a, this may be the world according to Suzanne. So I'm just going to say, but I'm big on you and I must become our first client. We must walk and, and, and live that process. Yet. And I have these conversations. And one thing she says is beware of the real estate owner uh, agent who has, has never bought a house themselves. Mm. That's, that, that's real. That's yeah. real, right? Beware of the financial advisor who's in debt. That's real. So beware of the coach or consultant who has not lived their program and, and, and has evidence that it works. Because there's two things when you do that. One is you're going to run in on your way to building it and, and, and getting the outcomes and getting the results. You're going to bang in, as you said, to all the places and spaces that people get stuck. You're going to run into all the emotions that people run into. You're going to find all the blind spots that you didn't see when it was theoretical and you thought this is a wonderful idea. And you're going to have evidence of the results, the outcome. You are going to be living evidence that this thing works and you speak to it from truth. So that's one of the reasons I think we all must become our first client. There's a, there's a, there's this other piece that that I want to just really jump into. When we're talking ten thousand hours, Tria, oftentimes people are like I've 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 put in my ten thousand hours. So I'm I'm like five years in. I put in my th the ten thousand hours. This is one of the reasons I think we also are required to become our first client. If you're doing the ten thousand hours and you're doing the same thing and you're not moving, you haven't done ten thousand hours. Mm. I don't care if it's five years. I don't care if it's 10 years, if you're in the same circle place doing the same thing, then you haven't done the 10,000 hours because our 10,000 hours in my mind, sometimes is painful. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is, it is devouring stuff. It is, it is, this isn't working. Let me figure this out and put in the hours to get the answer. This isn't happening. Let me figure it out. Let me go hire the coach to guide me so I come through the other side and now I have the answer and I have something new in my toolkit. This isn't working and I traditionally quit when I bang into this place and I'm not quitting this time. I'm going to build my persistence muscle. Now I'm doing my 10,000 hours. The 10,000 hours is growth hours. It's not the doing the same thing. And even if your business is doing well and you came in and you haven't grown, 
you haven't put in your 10,000 hours because 10,000 hours in my mind is making your best better. It's investing in yourself. It's growing yourself. It's expanding yourself. It's doing those things because how often have we watched people put in 10,000 hours of the same stuff that isn't working? Yeah. And what I'm getting also from that, it's not a 10,000 hours and stop. Um, it, it's a always a continuous hours. So it's like when you sit and you look at it, it's not really 10,000, it's like a million. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it, it's 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 that nonstop growing. There's always another level for each of us to get to. And I think it's when we tell ourselves that, you know, we got it. We can't be complacent and say, oh, we got it because there's always another you know, always another level to go to. And I see that Yetta is um, saying, making your best better. And Mm -hmm. that's absolutely what it's all about. Yeah, it it is. I I think it is, there has to be a love of what you're doing in, in my mind. There has to be a hunger. There has to be a need to continuously grow. I see 10,000 hours as the marker it's like, okay, I'm at that marker. And then you go, you go beyond. And, and it is really, am I hungry enough for this? Do I love it enough to go on the journey? Yeah. And, and, you know, looking at numbers recently, you know, I think it's 80% of, of, of businesses or self-employed people fail 80%. Uh, there's a small number that make it. And the question is why? And I think we're talking through this space where there is so much to learn. There's so much growth that is required. There's so many blind spots. There's so many other things that there has to be a love of it yeah. to, put in, to put in the time. And there has to be a consistent need to look at where the the places where things aren't working go, how do I make this better? How do I make me better? How do I make the system better? How do I deliver this better? And that's when you really know you're in, you're in that place where you're sharpening the saw. Cause that's really what the 10,000 hours is about.